This week, how can this fit in here? And is the new folding Huawei up to scratch? And it's my entry for Eurovision. Heart rate, temperature, steps, diet. These days, we can track all of our vitals. All of this data can help us to understand and tweak our lifestyles. But it's also moved way beyond the basics, allowing smartphone-connected devices to monitor conditions like asthma or diabetes from home. Laura Lewington has been to meet someone who's using something a little bit more advanced than a smartwatch to monitor his health. He's had a tiny computer inserted into his heart. Around 26 million people worldwide are suffering from heart failure, where the heart is struggling to pump blood around the body. For some time now, technology has been used to keep track of heart conditions. So I've come here to Hammersmith Hospital where an innovative procedure is being carried out. 71-year-old retiree Andrew lives with heart failure, requiring precise medication to keep him well. What's stopping you? Is it breathlessness or pain in the chest or...? Well, it's breathlessness, but it's not like a fit person's breathlessness. I was having a monthly appointment with consultants. And of course, with walking, it's always a problem because wards are quite a long way apart. You can walk 15 yards and then I have to pause and gather breath. Today, though, Andrew's having a tiny microcomputer inserted into his heart. What we want to offer you is a device that will sit just on here that's able to monitor the pressure in the left atrium. It'll give doctors access to continuous data, so any changes to his condition could trigger an alert. Getting prior warning w would keep me out of hospital and would mean I could be treated at home. This is the second procedure of its kind in the UK. So up until now, we've never been able to get this data um, in a patient who's not in an operating theatre with a catheter positioned in, in the heart. So this is potentially a major step forward. Um, means that we can adjust the medication at an early stage, which um, reduces um, uh, symptoms um, and critically reduces admissions to hospital. The device is threaded through the veins into the heart. Once in place, its wings will open, securing a sensor inside the left atrium and the really cutting edge bit, a microcomputer in the right. To reduce the size of uh, the implant, we develop a proprietary technology that enables digital transmission of the data without a battery. It charges a bit like a phone with a wireless charger. The belt powers the device as well as sucking the data from it so it can be sent to the cloud. From there, AI algorithms interpret the readings to flag if a doctor needs to take action. The more data we will gather throughout the time, the better the, our AI-based system will be. <laughs> Finally, it's time for Andrew to go into surgery. Doctors use ultrasound probes and X-ray vision to see inside his body. Equipment is fed through his veins and a central wall in Andrew's heart is pierced so the device can be put in place. This is usually the riskiest part of the procedure. So the device is now going into the heart. Fortunately for Andrew, all goes to plan, as this is the only way to get data directly from the left atrium. The device has now been released from the catheter and is sitting uh, on the septum. You can see the two sides of the umbrella of the device are attached either side of the septum to securely anchor it in. 
The procedure's gone very nicely, it's a perfect result. A month after the operation, we met to look at the data that had been collected and how useful it seemed. These look like perfect traces, like the traces we would see if we had an invasive catheter um, at the time of a, um, of a procedure. So this, th this is very, very good quality data. What does this mean for the data that you're looking at long term? We will be able to see um, the changes within the pressure um, in Andrew's heart and this is likely to be before he develops symptoms so that we can adjust his medication to try and prevent worsening of his symptoms and that way we will be able to um, keep Andrew as he is now, nice and stable. How has this changed your life? Emotionally it has, in, in that I, I can see a future now. I, I felt I'd just been put in a filing cabinet just waiting for something nasty to happen, but now there's um, possibilities of further treatment. What would you say to anybody else in a similar situation to you about the trial and what you've experienced so far? Consider it. I think it will improve their life. Hello and welcome to the week in tech. It was the week concerns over coronavirus wiped more than $238 billion off the stock value from the five biggest US tech firms. The UK broadcasting regulator Ofcom found that radiation levels of 5G are well within health and safety limits. And a US inquiry found that the death of a Tesla driver while his car was in self-driving mode was caused by the driver's over-reliance on the autopilot system. In Is That Really Necessary Robot News? How about searching for a book with an autonomous librarian? The Around B is a service bot that guides you to books you're looking for. And if you're suffering from carrying just a few too many, we'll carry them for you. If you've ever thought a robot could do with a softer touch, a jellyfish would probably agree. This silicon-fingered robot helps pick up jellyfish and other deep-sea creatures without accidentally squishing or harming them. The handy softbot also seems to cause less stress to the animals. And finally, researchers at Japan's Osaka University have developed a robot that can feel, sense and express pain. But for some unthinkable reason, they've made it look like a child. The disembodied robot is programmed to smile, grimace and wince. It's hoped that teaching it to recognise pain will help the artificial intelligence learn empathy and so better care for humans. Let's just hope it doesn't learn to feel revenge. The end of February every year is a big time for us. Having painstakingly planned for months and fought thousands of other journalists for access to the big stories, we head to Barcelona for the Mobile World Congress. It's where the big companies launch their big new phones and the small companies show off clever new innovations that may one day change the world. Only this year, as you may know, MWC is off cancelled because of concerns over the spread of the coronavirus. It's proved a nightmare for the telecoms industry, but our Chris Fox, who was due to cover it, thinks he's going to get a week off. However, not everyone has cancelled, and some companies have gone to Barcelona anyway. So I've got a bit of news for Chris. The cancellation of MWC has been nothing short of a nightmare especially for me. I couldn't cancel my flights at such short notice and I've been left stranded here in Barcelona with no work to do. Oh, turns out Huawei hasn't cancelled its flights either and is still doing a press conference right now. With a venue already booked and Huawei executive Richard Yu already in town, the company decided to do its launch event anyway. Only this time it was pre-recorded a day early and played out on the big screen. The big reveal was a follow-up to its first folding phone. And here it is, the folding Huawei Mate XS. If I open Instagram here, there's some pictures of dogs. And if I open the phone out, the pictures expand to fill the view. 
One thing I can't show you is Google Maps because the phone still doesn't have those Google apps. In fact, Huawei's now added its own app gallery, which it says will be a competitor to the Google Play App Store. Snapchat, TikTok, they are on there. The Sun newspaper is on there and BBC News but some big ones are missing, of course. Now, one of the concerns with folding phones is that the displays might be easily damaged because they're flexible. Now, Huawei says since the original Mate X, it has made the screen more resistant, although I have already seen a display model with a big old scratch on it. Huawei says there will be cases available. Mm -hmm. Also revealed was a smart speaker. Here it is, it's called the Sound X. All you do is tap the phone here to pair and then you can play your music, including from Spotify, because that is in the app gallery. So here we go. It's quite loud. Oh no. So one thing they did tell me is you can put your hand over it to silence the speaker if it's too loud, and that should have silenced it there. Now, the company says the way the speakers in here are configured is that one face is this way, one face is the other way, so the vibrations cancel each other out. So they say you can turn it up twice as loud as the Apple HomePod without it vibrating itself off the table. <laughs> that was very loud. While we're here, can we talk about Huawei's product names? I mean, we've got the MateBook, the MatePad Pro, and the M Pencil. I wonder where they got their inspiration from. On the outskirts of town, toothbrush giant Oral-B pressed on with an immersive dinner and light show experience. And if you're wondering why a toothbrush company is at Mobile World Congress, well, the toothbrushes have Bluetooth in them, obviously. The new Oral-B I.O. has a magnetic drive the company says is whisper quiet. Although to test that, I'll have to go somewhere silent, and I know just the place. Usually at this time of year, this place is full of the world's mobile phone industry, but I can't think of a quieter place this time to test this toothbrush. So here we go. I'll hold them the same distance from my mic. So here's the regular Oral-B. Very noisy. And here is the new one. Also fairly noisy. They said in their presentation that this is the toothbrush that whispers. I'm not convinced that that is a whisper. The ultimate test, of course, is whether you can hear it through the bathroom door and whether it would disturb your partner. So we tested that in the hotel. And the resounding result of our very scientific test is, yes, you can still hear it through the bathroom door. Honor also went ahead with its product launch. The new View 30 Pro phone has a dual view recording mode, so you can take videos with the wide angle lens and close up lens at the same time. Realme was planning to come to MWC for the first time this year, though it did its product launch in Madrid instead. The X50 Pro comes with a new focus mode that lets you lock yourself out of the phone for a few minutes and listen to relaxing sounds perfect to combat the stress of reorganizing your plans due to coronavirus. A new event has risen from the ashes of this year's MWC. The Phoenix event is a chance for companies whose plans were disrupted to meet and pitch their ideas. I don't think anything will substitute the person-to-person -person interaction. Um, I was having this conversation with someone at a networking event this morning and it's just, when you have a physical connection, I think business is just different. Well, in the end, MWC week wasn't a complete disaster for everybody. There's also some interesting 5G innovation going on underground, just in time for MWC week, as Omar Meta went to find out. Recently, it's been impossible to avoid 5G at MWC. Well, this year you can, because there's no show. And so the city and these train halls are eerily silent. But one project looking to make its debut for this year's event has still gone ahead. And it's all happening below the surface. And before showgoers even reached MWC, they were going to experience the super fast mobile network coverage on the underground on the way there. The 5G Barcelona initiative was set up to provide the city with the next generation of mobile broadband. It's currently available between four stations of Barcelona's train service, including Europa Fira, 
the closest station to where MWC takes place. But 5G isn't just available on the train platform. It's also available in the tunnel as the train travels, becoming one of the first in the world to do so. So let's just see how fast the coverage is down here. I was getting around 1.1 gigabits per second on average on the platform, but it was quite a bit lower when traveling on the train. The speed does differ between going down the tunnel and being in the station. It's slightly slower in the tunnel and it does vary. Sometimes it can be as high as 500 meg or it could be as low as 170. But saying that, you're still getting decent coverage down in a tunnel. And it meant I could watch a bit of click with barely any loading time whatsoever. But how was this achieved? Well, we waited until the train service was closed so we can get into the tunnel and check out the 5G antenna. Each set of antennae are roughly 500 meters apart with 15 currently installed between four stations. But only Vodafone provides 5G coverage in Barcelona and they own all the masts on the train line. But the plan is to do this for the entire train network. However, there's no clear date when this will happen. 5G requires more masts than previous network connections, so the setup can be quite complex. This is the first step. This is very difficult for us to make all the, all the installation at this moment. It's, it's expensive, but uh, we are thinking this is a good investment for the city. If other networks come in and say, we want to do 5G down in the rail network, <laughs> then Will Vodafone share their masks or will they have to install their own masks? We want to provide different operators and different networks in all the infrastructures. We tend to talk to Vodafone and perhaps it is possible, of course, because uh, Vodafone is the owner of the, this network. You've just got to hope that they yeah, say yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we, we have to be prepared for this situation in the next future. But until then, this 5G setup will act as a test lab for companies to create and test their apps, both to improve the railway logistics and what travelers can do on their phones whilst on their journey. So it looks like 5G is becoming part of the daily commute here in Barcelona. But we did hit a little bit of a problem. When testing the speeds of the 5G network, we hit the data limit. We used about 10 gigs in about an hour. So, uh, they're probably going to want to switch to an unlimited plan. This is a piano, and this, quite frankly, is all I know how to do. Just play these four chords over and over again until you get a massive hit. Trust me, it works. But learning how to play an instrument properly takes hard work. It takes skill, and it takes a great teacher, none of which I have. But take a look at this. This is AR Piano. You point your phone at your keyboard, and hey presto, you get a virtual virtuoso to show you how to tackle complex piano pieces. And the interesting thing is you can slow it right down and get him really close so you can see how you're supposed to shape your hands as you move from one note to the next. The problem is I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to hold the phone with one hand and also get both hands in to copy what he's doing. So um, there is a way to get more hands on though, or more accurately, hands in. LJ Rich has been the first to try a prototype which its makers promise can teach anyone to play. This little keyboard wants to teach you how to read music. So many people come up to me and say, oh, I really wish I'd learned to play an instrument, but it's too late for me now. And I really don't think that's the case. Certainly with some technology, it could be easier than you think to play your favourite song. Music company Roly took me inside their HQ to show me its prototype keyboard, Lumi, a light-up Bluetooth device which aims to give everyone the opportunity to learn their favourite song. Now, light-up keys are available on quite a few entry-level keyboards, but the Lumi has multicoloured LEDs, so it can make it easier to find where you are if all the C notes are, say, red, for example. 
Now, sheet music has stayed the same for hundreds of years, originating from writing down hand movements of the choir master. Rowley's CEO, among others, feels it's time to bring reading music into the 21st century. Still, most people today, when they learn how, learn how to play music, they learn to read music with a sort of traditional score. That is a quill-based technology. Even the shapes of the notes, you know, the fact that they're not perfect circles has to do with the, um, you know, like a quill pen and the way that you would write with that and that kind of, you know, calligraphy from four or five hundred years ago. And um, it's remarkable that that form of notation in that system is still what we use today. The device connects to an iPad with the help of an app and something that gives you a little bit more than just notes on a page. There's an element of um, intimacy or even kind of privacy with the music learning experience. Like if you have a Lumi in the Lumi app and you put on your headphones, you're in your own learning world and you can go at your own pace and the app will give you feedback. It's just between you and the instrument and um, you don't feel like necessarily that you're being judged in the way that you might if you had a, a teacher or your parents looking over your shoulder. It's likely the software may prove more lucrative than the hardware. Choose a song from a list of licensed partners and the app encourages people to learn to read that music. First, blocks that wait for you, a bit like the game Guitar Hero. Then, you have to play in time, where the colours help you find the notes. And finally, full-blown, grown-up score reading. Once you become a skilled musician, you may be at a point where you can kind of close your eyes and have this relationship between the sound and your muscle memory and your body. Um, and there's a point at which actually I think you can let the visual go as part of a primary form of music making, you know, and even music learning experience. But to get to that point is very difficult and most people fail. And it's because they feel, I think, that the overall system is too complex and also too austere. I certainly found the device visually pleasing and felt the urge to customise the colours, a feature that may soon become available. Bar a few latency issues, I think it's a clever, if slightly pricey way, to gamify learning music theory. Those with a little extra cash lying around can buy a few and link them together to get a longer keyboard. Regardless, I'm going to take the opportunity to encourage anyone who sees this to get on a piano or keyboard or any instrument, because when it comes to learning, it's never too late to start. That was LJ, and that's it for this week. Don't forget that we live on social media, so you can follow us throughout the week on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter at BBC Click. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.